I always wondered if I needed the absolute best performance out of my laptops. So I bought the M3 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro with my own money. And here's how it's been over the last month. Let's get started. I won't talk about the new space black color or the physical features of this laptop since it's kind of the same design it has been for three generations now. But I will describe the experience of using this device. The screen gets really bright, bright enough for use outside and the speakers sound good. The keyboard and trackpad feel nice, but like all MacBook keyboards, expect it to have that slightly glossy sheen from fingerprint oils over time. Physically for this machine, there's not much to complain about, but if I had to be super nitpicky, I would say Apple could shrink the notch a little bit like they have on their phones and make the padded feet on the bottom of the laptop a little grippier so it doesn't slide around as much as it does. That's genuinely all the complaints that I could possibly have. The lower end M3 Max MacBook Pro can be had at the default configuration on Apple's website for $3,200. However, something I pointed out in my first M3 Pro video is that there is a way to get the M3 Max chip for less than what Apple lists on their default configuration list. You need to select the M3 Pro MacBook Pro configuration that starts at $2,000 and then swap the chip to the M3 Max chip. This gets you the M3 Max chip in a MacBook Pro that's $200 cheaper, but it also only comes with half the storage size at 512 gigs of SSD storage and custom configurations like this one do take longer to ship, but that's because it's a custom configuration from Apple's website and you won't be able to find it outside of Apple either. But at the same time, you may be able to find the default configuration with more storage on sale at different retailers for the same price as this custom one anyway. So your mileage may vary there. It all depends on how you're purchasing the machine. On my end, I ended up getting the default M3 Max MacBook Pro that's listed and this config has the slightly slower M3 Max. The M3 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro is not my first experience with the 14 inch MacBook Pro lineup. And it's also not my first experience with an Apple Max chip. I have an M1 Max in my Mac Studio, but even then that M1 Max blows everything out of the water. I tried tossing everything I do at this laptop and it's crazy that I just know it'll handle it all with ease. So here's the thing, the M3 Max is the fastest Apple Silicon chip that you can get inside of a MacBook. But the Max chip this year is so much more powerful than previous years. But to make that more easily understood, I'm gonna show you some of these benchmarks I took of it. It's just stupid fast. But at the same time, a single run of Cinebench 2024's multi-core CPU test drains the battery around 14%. That's a 10 minute benchmark. The laptop, when pushed to its limits, does get hot, the fans get audible, and the battery drains real quickly. But on the other hand, when you treat this laptop like a casual web surfing machine, the battery becomes fantastic, lasting me over a day of usage. This laptop can go from zero to 100 or 100 back down to zero, just like that. I really appreciate that it can be a powerhouse of a machine with fans revving and chugging power, but at the same time can also be that cute, quiet little computer I like taking everywhere with me. But the standout feature of the M3 Max MacBook Pro though is how well it does in gaming. While Macs typically aren't great computers for gaming due to a mix of software and hardware, the M3 Max MacBook Pro definitely has the hardware part down. It's really down to if your game library is supported on Mac OS or not. If you thought this MacBook was powerful, then you'd think the same about today's sponsor. Matic. You've probably owned a robot vacuum cleaner hoping it would make your life easier and less stressful. But instead, all you do is get a loud disc-shaped box that zips around your house, bumps into things, leading them to fall over, choose wires, and always makes sure that its presence is known. That's where Matic comes into play. Matic is a completely reinvented, actually intelligent robot floor cleaner. It handles both vacuuming and mopping super quietly around the clock, cleaning up the messes you make. It has large wheels, which helps it navigate all kinds of surface types like thick pile rugs and thresholds, and it even actively avoids objects in its path instead of bumping into them and knocking them over. It does all this through a radically different Tesla-like approach approach, using just cameras and powerful vision algorithms to build a live 3D map of your home. I was impressed playing around with the layout of my house that it made, and the mapping is done all on the device and not on the cloud, so your data stays private and stored locally on the vacuum. It listens to your voice, understands your gestures, and really allows you to clean exactly the way you want. And through the app, you can also schedule when it cleans your homes or check on the status of the vacuum. What I really like about the Matic Robot Vacuum is just how quiet it is compared to all other robot vacuums. I had to baby the Matic way less because it actively avoided obstacles instead of getting tangled up and involved in messes. If you're interested in the Matic Robot Vacuum, check out the link in the video description down below. They have an incredible introductory offer from now until December 31st, and you can also use promo code Jimmy100 to get an additional $100 off. 
And thanks again to Matic for sponsoring this portion of the video. What do I personally use the M3 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro to do? I normally have my M3 Max MacBook Pro connected to an external monitor through USB type C, connected to an ethernet cable to my NAS, an SD card plugged in to pull footage off of, and I prepare and edit all of my content for this YouTube channel on this single machine. And it does it flawlessly. I never felt a hitch or delay in, in anything that I do. Scrubbing through Final Cut Pro timelines, editing images for YouTube thumbnails, having 20 to 30 different tabs of Safari open and leaving Spotify running in the background, it does it all great. But here's the thing, the M3 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro handled all this flawlessly the exact same way. And honestly, all this power feels very unnecessary for how I use my own laptops. I came from an M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. Whenever I tossed at that machine, it also handled things perfectly. So it's safe to say that I wasn't constantly bottlenecking that machine and that I didn't need to upgrade. So when I did upgrade to the M3 Max, all the extra performance just sits there unused, except for the rare times where I actually do need to use it. Which don't get me wrong, is a very nice problem to have. But if you're trying to maximize the value you get out of your computer for the amount you paid for, it's unnecessary. So let's just say you're watching this review because, well, you're looking at the M3 MacBook Pro lineup as a whole. What should you get? If I was making a suggestion as to what you end up with buying, I'd suggest you look at the M3 Pro MacBook Pro first. The Pro chip used to be that sweet spot in terms of performance between the base model chip and the Max chip, but ever since the transition from the M1 Pro to the M3 Pro, the changes aren't all that significant. But on the Max side, the M3 Max has improved significantly compared to the previous versions. But you have to consider, do you actually need all of this power if you never touch it. The Pro chip provides a lot of performance for almost everyone's needs. This M3 Max chip just takes all that performance and makes everything pale in comparison with eye-watering numbers. This is like choosing between two similar cars in every single way, but one version goes zero to 60 in five seconds, which is respectable and fast enough for most people, and the second car goes zero to 60 in three seconds. All that extra speed would be nice to have and would be really fun to use, but is it something that you actually need or is this just something that you told yourself that you want? Except in Texas, right? Where everyone drives 20 over the speed limit. Then we definitely need that extra speed. Cause let's face it, we can't drive in this state. So for the people looking at the M3 lineup, I'd suggest the M3 Pro machine first. But if that's a little out of your price range, I'm a little hesitant on this suggestion because who knows how the used and clearance market will go. But consider refurb or on clearance M1 Pro or M2 Pro MacBook Pro if the price is right for those machines. Those get you a significantly better value than the standard M3 Pro if you can get your hands on one, but the longer you wait, the harder those will be to get. So just keep that in mind, but there are some good deals to be had while there is stock for these machines. But I can't say that'll be the case next year. Now, if you're considering the 16 inch Pro over the 14 inch Pro, it's all kind of personal preference, but you should ask yourself if you travel or go mobile a lot, because having that extra screen real estate is nice, especially at home or at a destination that you arrived at, but traveling with a 16 inch Pro, that larger body is annoying, making your backpack heavier, harder to get out of your bag, and difficult to use on those cramped airplane seats. But once you've sat down and got it out and running, it's so much nicer than the 14 inch. So definitely there are some trade-offs, no matter which one you pick between the two there. So at this point, it's conclusion time. The M3 Max MacBook Pro is a monster and can handle everything that I toss at it. But I also just recently tried the M3 Pro MacBook Pro and I dailyed a M1 Pro MacBook Pro for two years. Knowing everything that I know now, would I pick up the M3 Max MacBook Pro? The M3 Max is a great machine. It gives you crazy performance if you need it, but doesn't mind slowing down and lets you enjoy a normal laptop experience with great battery life too. But it's just not for me. I don't think I'm the target demographic for this. I think it's good to admit when something has too much power and that you'll never make use of it. And that's what this machine is to me. This machine is meant for the type of person who needs access to crazy amounts of power on the go. We're getting things to process, load, render, or compile faster means that they can do their jobs faster or better. That was already how I felt for myself with the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. But if you're that person who needs that level of performance, you should get the M3 Max MacBook Pro. It's fantastic. If you're anyone else though, and that means most people, look at one of the lower end MacBooks instead. Anyway, what do you personally think? Would you get an M3 Max MacBook Pro? Or do you think the M3 Pro is fast enough? Where do you draw the line between future proofing and just too much power for your own needs? What laptops are you personally eyeing? Do I need to do a super long two year review of my old M1 Pro MacBook Pro just to show how it's held up after all this time? Leave all that in the comment section below and well, I'll see you all next time. Bye.